Last week, last Saturday, we had this awesome conference, which is organized by Thriving Congregations Initiative, initiated by Metropolitan Methodius, run by Panos Kufos, who does a great job. They periodically have conferences and lead our metropolis towards uh, the concept of being thriving, not surviving. We have gotten used to being surviving communities. As long as we can keep the lights on, as long as we can pay the, pay the heat bill, that we're fine. We can just come pray and go home. But Thriving Congregations Initiative is trying to elevate our parishes to a new level. And I will not spoil what it means to be a thriving congregation, what it takes to become a thriving congregation, what are the obstacles and difficulties, and how we overcome. For that, I have invited Naraj Sparajas, who is the leader of the Thriving Congregations Initiative in our community, with Bill Bozoglu there and others, to come and present to us what was the core message of this conference and how we're going to go ahead with it. Naraj, please come forward. Dear Father Anthony, thank you for the opportunity to speak to our parishes today about the Thriving Congregations Initiative. We had our fall 2023 meeting on Saturday, November 19, and I thank you for the opportunity to provide an update. The Lilly Foundation provided the Greek Orthodox Metropolis of Boston a large grant to support the Thriving Congregations Initiative. This four to five year program is designed to guide our parishes to thrive. It will help each parish understand our cultural and social contexts to develop and adopt a clear mission and vision to cultivate authentic Orthodox Christian practices and to plan for sustaining our own efforts at the parish level. What is a thriving congregation? Allow me to ask a different question. If we closed our church, would some of them know that we are no longer here other than for the festival? To become a thriving congregation, we need to start with why, our why. Why do we have a church here in Somerville? Those that came to Somerville built this church to welcome their friends and relatives and to offer them a familiar religious and community experience. Are we still waiting for Greek immigrants to fill the pews of our church? Is this the conduit to our future? In Greece and in many other countries, there is only one major religion in any community. The church is the center of the community. Everyone in the community is Greek. The Domitian of the Virgin Mary, Greek Orthodox Church, and the neighborhood around it is not in the center of a geographically Greek community. It is not in the center of a church-going Christian community. Many of the people that will come to this church tomorrow will have no connection to Greece. This makes it less obvious to understand what our mission should be. Why are we here? Who are we here to serve? Who is our neighbor? Who is our community? And who will be in our congregation? Will this congregation thrive? We are not alone. This is not a Greek Orthodox problem. This is not even a Christian problem. This is a challenge for all faiths. Church, faith in God, and the practice of our faith have been replaced with worldly concerns. Let me give you an example shared this month at one of our meetings with a couple of small edits. You have Patriots football tickets. Yay! You go on Facebook and you let everyone know you're going. You invite your friends to go with you, right? You go to watch your team win. You know when your team wins and when it loses. You even know how it wins and how it loses, right? We all have those arguments after that on Sunday, right? And this is just a football game. Do we tell our family and friends that we're going to church on Sunday? Do we invite them to come with us? Do we know why we go to church? Do we know what the goal of the church is or what it, what it means for our church to win? 
These are difficult questions, and I only ask them to show that we have work to do, especially if we want to grow as a Christian community. This is why the Lilly Foundation is funding Thriving Congregations Initiative. The Thriving Congregations Initiative will help us determine for ourselves where we are today, where we want to be as a parish, how to get there, and how to thrive. At the last meeting, we learned about how the Orthodox Ministry Services and the Faith Tree Relationship Project can help us. The Orthodox Ministry Services is already helping us with our strategic plan so that we understand where we are winning and where we need help. They have reviewed our church finances and have made recommendations on next steps. The Faith Tree Relationship Project can help us with the future of our church. For those families that have children from 9 to 25 years old, how many of your children struggle with their identity, with intimacy, and with mental health? Do they know who they are? Are they comfortable with who they are? Do they know how to love, or who to love, or what to love, or what love is? Do they have friends? Are they lonely? Do they feel stress, anxiety, sadness, or depression? Where are they getting their information and help from? Do you trust the school systems to guide your child through these difficult years? Which teacher will utter the words, you are a child of God? The Faith Tree Relationship Project has developed books and videos to help parents with these difficult topics. Theologians, psychologists, and youth program experts have come together to create this program. The Thriving Congregations Initiative offers these and other programs to help the parishes of the Boston metropolis. We need to develop a plan on how to use the tools to build a relevant parish in our community. I hope you can see why I'm so excited to be leading the Thriving Congregations Initiative for our parish. We are a resilient church. Resilient church. We came out of COVID strong. Look at how we're building for our future, both with our buildings and our stewardship. The Thriving Congregations Initiative will certainly help us guide to us to become a more vibrant church and an integral part of the communities we are called to serve. The Lilly Foundation is providing the money, and along with the Metropolis is providing the guidance. It is our responsibility to pave the path forward for this beautiful community. In the icon of the Good Samaritan, who will we be? We can either help our community and thrive, or we can pray for the charity of strangers. Thank you, Father.